How are you? All right, I'm gonna come back out here again, and I'm gonna let, I want you to act like the Lakers are winning right now, okay? So, give me one minute, give me one minute. Hello, you guys. I'm like, you guys, come on, this is a comedy. We're at Unprison, we are not at Handmaid's Tale. How are you guys? I am Justin Sylvester, I am the host of E! News. Has anyone ever heard of me? Y'all yeah. better act like I'm Kerry Washington tonight, okay? <laughs> now, when they called me to do this event, I originally said no until they told me what it was because this show is one of my favorite tromedies on screen. Do you know what a tromedy is? It's a comedy about trauma. And I'm so happy that someone finally sees my pain because it is in this show and I cannot wait to talk tonight with the stars. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Please welcome first to the stage, Ji Young Han. <laughs> Brenda Strong. <laughs> An Oscar winner in five years, Jordan McIntosh. Raka to Havana! And give it up for Marky Richardson! The man who stole our hearts in this amazing, amazing show, Delroy Lindo! And finally, the woman whose book I have already pre-ordered and it hadn't even gone on sale yet or for pre-order, she is the woman who makes Meryl nervous, Miss Carrie Washington right here. because what I love about a Kerry Washington project is that the synopsis will break it down for you and they'll give you what the show's about, but then the show has 29 hidden meanings in it because like the wall's just not the wall. She's knocking this down, she's knocking that down. It's a whole thing. So I want to go down the metaphor. line. It's true, I do love a metaphor. You do love a metaphor. So I want to go down the row and I want to ask you guys, what was your favorite theme for you and your character in this show? I want to start at that end. <laughs> I, only because I, I want to make sure we get to hear from all of our incredible cast members. And also, I'm just dying to hear your answers. So we're going to start down there. Wow, that was very generous. Karen. Love you. I love you, sis. Um, I'm going to do the, I bet you, you all thought of this word, so I'm going to steal it first. Uh, forgiveness. I think that means a lot. And I think everyone, you know, obviously not everyone has the same story, but everyone knows of a time where forgiveness has been so freeing. So that's been really, really great, and it makes life so much easier. So that was really important for me. Um, I think for me, it was really the theme of the family comes in all forms. And um, some is not your blood family, some is discovered family. Some are the people who become your biggest teachers. Um, and Nadine definitely wanted to be part of this family, and uh, by hook or by crook, she was going to enter that door. So um, you bring new meaning to by hook. <laughs> Just saying. You know, pun intended, pun achieved. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So family. Um, I think the whole show is about you know forgiveness and love and you know does it matter who's like what who's this or that it's just always if they do something wrong just forgive Aww. 
Give her the Emmy, the Oscar, the Golden Globe. Give her everything you can right now. <laughs> Most of all, give her a second season. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get to that. Hulu, I know y'all in here. <laughs> um, you guys took my words. Um, I'm going to say change. Change is healthy. Change. Everybody needs a little change in their lives. You know, if you're stuck on the same thing for all of your life, it's kind of boring. You know, change is, uh, everyone needs a little change. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't have anything uh, spectacular to say, um, <laughs> but uh, I'll just say the family that eats together stays together. I forgot what episode it was, but there's a three. scene where we're three. Okay, three. We're all eating, and I love to eat. That's all I do. Um, and that day was one of my favorites because I got to eat all day. And the food was actually great. So, amen. Well, apparently she forgot to season the food in that episode, but we gonna let that slide. We gonna let that slide. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll also say construction of family. And I say construction of family because this is a family that has suffered that has suffered, that has suffered from being um, pulled apart in very, very um, violent and challenging ways. And all uh, the themes, many of the themes have to do with the reconstruction, uh, the holding <coughs> on to our family. I think my, go ahead. No, no I know, I know what you're doing. No. You got some. Like when we, it's like when they say cut, and I'm like, do another one for Delroy. He's got another thing in there to do. Are you sure? Okay. Um, I think my there's so many favorite themes, but I think my most favorite theme that we deal with on the show, I'm gonna cheat by kind of making it too, the idea of embracing your wounds and embracing your inner child, right? That your inner child, if you can connect with what your inner child needs, then you can begin to heal the wounds that can move you forward into your adulthood. Yeah. And that for me, that you know, that we got to meet your inner child when we went down to Alabama and, you know, this genius actress for my inner child. Um, <laughs> And I, and I think also in some ways the, the generational trauma that's really being dealt with in the show, you know, it, in my experience, sometimes our kids come with the messages from your inner child. So I think we're also dealing with that with the son and mother and grandfather dynamic as well, that there's, there's just a lot of, you know, being willing to deal with the trauma. Yeah. yeah. My favorite theme, not that I'm on the cast now, but I am trying to lobby for season two, <laughs> is that my therapist needs a therapist. Yes. yes. <laughs> Clap your hands out there if your therapist needs a therapist. <laughs> but it's so funny because when I first heard about this show, I heard, you know, Delroy, Kerry Washington. Unprisoned. I was like, it's a drama, it's gonna happen, get your tears together. But as executive producers, why was it important for you to tell a story so heavy, but tell it with so much heart and humor? I, I think the humor actually, it was important that it, it be um, the deputy's relationship between the drama and the comedy. And in, in fact, when Carrie and I first spoke, it was described to me as a, as a dramedy. Um, because I think we carry Tracy very smartly um, realized that because it had the story had the potential of being heavy, it had to be it would be smart to temper it with some comedic overtones, which would make it easier for audiences to um, accept. And I thought that was really smart. It scared me um, the, the the prospect of doing comedy, but it's a very smart move, and it has proven to be one of the most successful components of this uh, show, I think. I think we also are so grateful, for, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but we are so grateful to our writers. Amen. Shout out to the WGA. Amen. 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 In particular, we, we could not 
be telling this story without the writers. Um, there is no story without the writers. And, you know, in particular, Tracy McMillan, the show is inspired by her life. And Tracy's funny. And her dad is funny. And their life together is funny. As much pain as there is in their relationship, one of the things they love to do together is laugh. And for anybody who follows me on Instagram, you know, that's my relationship with my dad as well. We love to laugh. And there's that, that spoke to me. Um, and then to have Yvette Lee Bowser be you know, our fearless leader, you know, she is a dynamo, a legend, a queen of comedy. And so that was important for us because neither one of us considers ourselves comedic actors, but we were looking for the truth. And sometimes the truth is funny. And we had writers who could really help ground us and push us into exploring places where something might be more funny. And then this extraordinary cast who just was constantly taking those swings, those big swings to find like, where's where are the edges of the, the humanity in this because human beings are funny how can we find how can we be exploring the truth and also looking for levity you know oscar wilde used to say open their mouths with laughter to shove the truth in and i think Woo! our show does that now i'm so happy that you are here because i gotta talk to you I, brenda i didn't know you had it in you Nadine was the biggest surprise. Nadine was a big surprise, but you grabbed her. You grabbed her and you ran with her and you committed to her. What was that process putting you in that space of such a rough but loving character like that? Oh, um, you know, first of all, my, my management has been begging me to do a comedy for a really long time. And I've been living in the world of drama and I think um, if you're going to do something, um, you have to do it all the way. And I remember standing backstage uh, off camera with Delroy, the very first scene that we ever shot, and Carrie is listening to our sex sounds. And she's sitting on the couch wanting to vomit because it's just too much to hear her parents or her you know, dad and her stepmom go at it. And I looked at Delroy and I went, Oh, here we go. <laughs> and the commitment of this man to go there with me gave me the courage to be as big as I knew she needed to be in order to be the antagonist to Carrie. So I need to, needed to commit so boldly that she would have something to push against. And because I had a partner in Delroy that let me go there and we found the real love that was the underpinning of the relationship, everything else is just play. You know, it's just finding the funny and then going, what would be the most outrageous choice? And then doing that. And then going, okay, well, what else? You know, that's it. Did it work? Did it work? Yeah. Now to my girl G over here. I need some help. Hey. Okay? Because you figured out how to build this sisterly bond with Carrie so quickly. My sister and I have been trying to do this for 35 years, so I need some tips. How does one do it? And a lot of times when you don't look like someone or you're not from the same place, it's really hard to connect on that level, but you guys kind of did it. How did you guys find that spark between the two of you? Carrie and I met the day we first shot. And, and that's hard. This show is about family. You can tell immediately when you look at me and Carrie, we don't look like sisters. But, you know, first of all, I have wonderful experience uh, being a younger sister. So I have really strong little sister attitude, which is usually just like annoying but adorable. <laughs> and it comes naturally. <laughs> so good at it um but Carrie is you know I can also get very starstruck so I was so fortunate because I'm a huge Carrie Washington fan that she when you meet her she's such a generous person and a generous actress she's genuinely like I wish she wasn't because it's easier to like to just like be like ah she's making it hard she she doesn't know but like she's the human embodiment of a hug, and then add on these 
like a warm hug, like a really good hug, the one you I needed an an after a hug, a long hug. day. <laughs> yeah. But she is, and it's and that was so inviting that it wasn't hard. I, I wish I could be like I had to dig in and imagine my sister. Like it wasn't like that because she's so loving, and I think the core of relationships is there is love there, even with sisters who are teasing each other, even when there's clearly a lot of pain, there's love there. And so it, 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 was, it was really easy to, to tap into that with Carrie, because she to know her is to love her. I, I have to say, I have a friend in the audience who's a great filmmaker, Miles Crawford, and I, the week that we were casting this role, I watched a project of Miles and she was in it. And I called him and I was like, is she nice? <laughs> is she good? You know what I mean? Because when you work these hours on these sets, you want to be with good people. And he gave me the thumbs up and her tape was incredible. Her read was incredible and that was it. But I will tell you, we are such a mess on set and that I will, I said to every director and every DP, in scenes with G and I, you have to cross shoot because we are constantly improvising, we're constantly surprising each other. It's just like nonstop play. It's so much and fun. And so I was like, if you don't cross shoot it to get us both at the same time, you won't be, you're not gonna be able to edit it. You're gonna you miss won't it. have it. So it was really like more than any other person that like ping pong, it was so, we were so rapid and we like to surprise each other. And I just, I was like, you must cross shoot this. Yeah, so fun. It worked. She's so great. It really did. I felt the love coming off screen. You guys felt the love, did you? Now, I can say as a black man in Hollywood, when you take on a subject matter like this and you put yourself in the forefront, there could be a lot of pressure for you. Did you feel that pressure, Delroy, taking on Edwin? And how did you fight through it? I didn't feel pressure per se, because um, I had been welcomed into this process and this project by Carrie Tracy, I met Yvette later, with such a warmth and a generosity of spirit, such that I just had to do my job. And um, Brenda talks about the very first scene and as our very first scene together, and Carrie and, and our first scene together, we all just jumped in. And if this conversation has affirmed anything for me, and it doesn't really need affirmation, but if this conversation has affirmed anything, it is how wonderful and loving actors are when they are just doing this thing, which is applying themselves to the work. Because, I, 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 Carrie and I, we, to, to your question about pressure, we just, we showed up together and we applied ourselves to the work. And Brenda and I, uh, that, that, that scene, that first scene, and I, and I called Brenda that night and I said, I just got to tip my hat, because you went there. You went there. Yeah. And she, you should go there. <laughs> she went there, right? But then Brenda in, in, it came to me after we had shot one or two takes, and she said something to me that let me know that she trusted me, um, that we trusted each other, and we could go there together. Um, and this is such a, a wonderful company of actors. It's a wonderful company of actors. Um, and we just do our jobs. Yeah. We just we, we yeah. do our jobs together. If I can, because your question started off with being a black man, ah. I, I just want to say that one of, as you speak about this company, that one of the things I find most special about the show is the phenomenal relationship that are navigated between you and Marquis and you and Folly. Those scenes between these three generations of black men and your really brilliant chemistry, the three of you, um, not the three of you in one scene, but each of you with Delroy, it was 
Sure. Spectacular to watch on set, spectacular to watch in the edit. There's just so much heart that all three of you, I watched all hard. three of you have tremendous hard. vulnerability and creative courage and I just don't know that we get to see that in this way with black men on screen and off. And that, those, those kinds of components um, take the edge off of any pressure that one would feel. Because, you know, actor to actor, actor to actor, right? We, we, we're in there doing it. And it, it doesn't make it easy, but it makes it easier. And it makes the process um, look, these guys are probably, I'm not fun on set. <laughs> yes, you know. I'm, not, I'm not fun. <laughs> but it, made, it makes it, it makes it, it makes it easier to tackle and negotiate what one has to negotiate. And that's right across the board, company wide. Every single person sitting up here, um, and we all we all partake of that, you know. Um, so I love that, and I'm going to stick with you because I'm dying to know, as a young actor, yes, yes. probably you, you're acting along some PhDs in the game, and my grandmother used to tell me, if you don't leave with anything, at least leave with one thing from somebody on that set, learn one thing. So what's the one thing you've learned from any of these actors here? Um, it's not so much learning, it's more of like an evolution for me. I, when I first came on the set, I was nervous out of my mind. You know, first day of the pilot, I got home and I was like, yeah, they're definitely not bringing me back to the rest of the <laughs> I just remember it's every day is a master class, you know what I'm saying, working with these extremely talented legends of the industry, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, it's an opportunity that many people wake up and can only dream of, you know, and um, I got the opportunity to, to get to be a part of that, so of course I had to give my all, I had to bring everything I had, and um, when you push yourself to that limit, you have to learn how to push past those limits, because, you know, people get trapped in this idea of, like, I can only go so far, but working with these two, you know, you learn how to break past those limits. You learn how to surpass those. And they helped me evolve into something I didn't know I could do. By the end of the show, I was doing work I didn't, I don't think I'd be capable of doing if I wasn't a part of the show to begin with. Yes, you were. And Harry and I have spoken about uh, in our various interviews what a, um, a revelation you were and are, Folly. Um, no, truly. Young man, I mean, I didn't know how nervous he was or was not, but what I do know is that by the end of the, that last episode, you had taken all of these leaps and the courage to be really raw and present and fully um, committed that you, the, those qualities that he brought, right, that scene in the house, and he evolved to that. And it's, it's, it was really, it was and it is a revelation to be a part of and to see a young actor um, evolve and open up like that. Beautiful, beautiful work. You know, we, we actually learned something from Folly, too. Yeah. And that is how to sleep. <laughs> Between I can tapes, do it right now. He's, he's a genius at it. I can't tell you how many pictures we have of falling asleep on set. And we're doing things behind his back, and we're taking pictures with him, and doing rabbit ears, and he is just out. So he has taught me how to be a master sleeper. <laughs> you gotta get it in when you can, you know? <laughs> Now, fun fact, you guys, I was actually supposed to be in season one. I was supposed to play Little, little Paige, but they said I didn't fit in the costumes. But it obviously went to the right young lady. You are a masterpiece. Okay? And we don't get to see this kind of talent all the time. So I'm dying to know, 
What was your favorite, favorite scene to film? Because I have mine. Be honest, be honest. Um, my favorite scene to film was the dance scene when Carrie had that, had that imagination of Little Paige um, as I'm like trying to be like Billy Porter and then there was loud music. Um, she did bad man with jam was playing. <laughs> and there's lots of lights and smoke machines. That was like a really, bl that was a blast to film. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Did you have fun doing this? I did. I want to say something about our incredible costume designer and our costume department because in every scene that little Paige appeared, they basically bought doubles of every outfit. And for Jordan, they took apart every item of clothing and repatterned it in a smaller size so that she had identical clothes. I mean, it was extraordinary to witness how they recreated my character, this little mini me that I love so much. <laughs> so cool. I thought, Jordan, I thought you were going to say you just love when you got to do the swear words. Because I know how much that fun you was had. That my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> now, anyone in here watch reality TV? Uh, yeah. Anyone a Real Housewives fan? All right. There's a character in Real Housewives on every city, and we call them the Bone Collector. Because they're kind of stealth but they carry, they kind of connect everybody, they move the mess from this side to this side, so we go on every week, and I felt like that character was you. You were, Marquis, you were the, kind of the epicenter into giving us a little bit of insight. You were her therapist, you were his accountability. How did you juggle that important job, and did you not even realize it was that important, because it was really important? <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I guess you. I guess you're right, huh? Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about it. He, Mal is a lot more earnest than I am. Um, <laughs> he's not as crazy as I am. So, um, in regards to juggling that position, um, all I did was listen, because if I did anything else, then I wouldn't be able to do my job. And what I mean, like anything else, I mean like think about what was actually happening working with Delroy Lindo and Kerry Washington. Um, so much so that even on like day one, there <laughs> we're, there's a scene between, I think it's in, it's in the first episode, there's a scene with the three of us, and like halfway through the day, I have to stop and go to them, each individually, and I'm like just rambling, telling them how much they mean to me. It's like black people, and masters of the craft, and business people, and just, you know, they're my Mount Rushmore's of acting. And uh, Delroy is like, God bless you, brother. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> and Carrie's like, we have time. We have, we have so much time. And he's just going on and on and on and on and on and rambling and rambling and rambling. Like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be back. Um, so I don't know how I did it, <laughs> aside from just like not thinking about what actually happened until we were wrapped, really. Um, but all I did was listen. It, it was funny, it's, like it's such a master class just to be in the presence and to share just the space and, uh, and the energy with everybody up here. So um, I just did my job, got my check, and went home. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a little personal here for five minutes? Do you guys mind? <laughs> What I love about the show and what I hate about the show is that it's like WebMD. You, you self-diagnose yourself after. <laughs> You're like, ooh, I gotta call my mom and apologize because I didn't understand it was her trauma that made me come home at 5.30 before the street lights came on. And it, you know, there were so many of those moments where I either forgave myself or I forgave someone else in my life. I might not have said it out loud to them, but in my heart, I could move on from certain things because I understood it. Is there anything in either of you guys' personal life that 
watching the show, it made you reflect on it differently and almost forgive yourself or someone else. <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> and I'm trying to get to season two. <laughs> Who's going to start this? I, I, I want to say, and I'm not sure that I'm actually going to answer your question. <laughs> One of the things that's kind of revealing about these, the process of talking about the work, one of the things that's, is that there are some things that one does not think about until one is asked a question. When one is asked a question, then one is compelled to answer the question. And then you have to kind of deconstruct and break down, well, what was happening there? Why did I do that? And, and that's not always, for me anyhow, I'm teetering between answering the question, answering the given question, and not wanting to demystify, and I know that sounds kind of shishi foo foo, but not wanting to demystify um, something beautiful that has occurred in the work. The fact that, um, who are you people? <laughs> like, are we here? Are we here to? <laughs> All right, Delroy, you're on a show called Unprecedented. <laughs> it's on Hulu. You're an executive producer. Right, I got that. And these are the people who love the show right. and came out to watch you. All right. Okay. So give them. They're voters. They're voters. They're voters. They're voters. All right. And the IRS yeah. is also in the back doing audits tonight. Okay. So I don't know if this will impact or influence your voting pattern, <laughs> but sometimes it's 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 difficult to address something wonderful that has happened in a company of actors and talk about it. Yeah. Because you want to just, one wants to just kind of leave it alone and let it be what it's going to be and let it have the impact that it's going to have on audiences. And sometimes, I get a little nervous sometimes about trying to articulate. Um, the alchemy. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. What I can say is that um, this is a terrific, and this is where I'm not answering your question, but this is a terrific <laughs> company of actors, all really applying ourselves to work. This is a half hour dramedy, which means, as you all know, as we all know, time. The clock is ticking every single second. And there's only the, there's just so much time that we have to kind of we have to be prepared when we come on set. We have to have done our homework and done everything we can so that when we show up, we're ready. And the fact that this company of actors has done what we have done and that his, that it has been so incredibly positive to, positively responded to, a is a is a is an incredibly affirming and gratifying thing, but one doesn't. I don't want always to kind of deconstruct it. Um, I want it to just be out there and and have you guys, the voters, or no, just as audience, <laughs> react and respond and enjoy and appreciate the work. Yeah. Well, you know what? I respect that, <laughs> and I'm going to turn the question around on the audience. <laughs> but a round of applause if you have taken something from this show that's going to stick with you for the rest of your life make some noise um, you know when we went to South by Southwest with the yeah. show yeah. we did four sit down interviews with journalists and three out of the four journalists had a parent who was incarcerated. Oh, wow. And they were all different races. 
because there are 80 million Americans who are living with a criminal record. And for each of those people, there is a ripple of family and friends, loved ones, who is caring for that person, loving that person, trying to figure out how to coexist with that person, forgive that person. Um, and so this is really, you know, the way we talk about the show is that it's like a, a it's about a family we've never seen before, but this is us. This is who we are as Americans. We are, you know, we incarcerate people at a higher level than any other nation. So this is who we are. This is how we're trying to exist. We're trying to live through this trauma <laughs> and love through this collective trauma. So many of us have either been part of the system, whether it's in jail or prison or the foster care system, or whether it's, you know, so many of the institutions that are attacking our humanity. And for us, the show is about how you <clears throat> go back to that humanity and figure out how to love your family and create family and embody healing in the midst of that. So, you know, for me, I know so many of us, we were bringing our own experiences, even, even put the criminal justice system, or if you want to call it justice, but put that system aside, then also, the show is really about generational trauma and family, right? Like, we are all navigating complicated relationships with our parents. You will know when your pre-ordered book arrives. So, you know, there's like, there's none of us who are immune from that dynamic, from trying to figure out where our parents end and where we begin, that individuation, trying to, you know, embrace the people we love, but also have the courage to be who we are. All of that is so universal. So I think that's part of why the show is really resonating for people. I think so many people identify with these systems that are trying to eradicate our humanity, but also we just identify with being, trying to adult, you know, just like trying to get this adulting on and trying to love, you know, for Paige, she's trying to love her father and love her son and she's in that sandwich generation and, you know, for her, for her son, he's trying to figure out how to love a grandfather he's never known and the father is, you know, trying to be there for his daughter and his grandson, like we're all just doing the best we can to, to find that family that you talked about, whether it's a stepmother or a mother or a foster sister, or the, you know, that's, that's what families look like. So anyway, I'm rambling, but I think there is so much to identify with in the show. And it, it, we would, you would be hard pressed for, to add that each of us, I don't think any of us up here would say, this didn't touch me personally, or I didn't bring right. some of myself to this story. Right. Mm -hmm. And I sit next to Carrie Washington or Yamba Van Sant, because I gotta fix my life today. <laughs> I gotta know, again, I'm coining tromedy because it really is a comedy about trauma. But I have to know, shout out to Hulu who pushed the button and let the envelope open and really let the show air and breathe and live. How hard was it for you guys? Because I know a lot of times networks get scared to take on certain things but it seems like your partners really let you guys do it. What was it like to have that freedom to tell this authentic and inspiring story? We were really supported, right? Do you guys feel we like were, we were, absolutely, we were absolutely. really supported to tell the truth? We were absolutely. never encouraged to water it down, and, and a lot of that is this, the incredible producing team of Eva Lee Bowser, Tracy McMillan, Joy is here, my producing partner, Pilar from Simpson Street. There's just an incredible group. But our Disney family, from our signature, ABC signature, um, Hulu, everybody really got that the more truth we tell in this show, the better off it is for everybody. Yeah. Well, you guys, I think that is our time. I want to thank the cast of a prison tonight. I want to thank you guys for all coming out. Please give it up for the cast of the amazing a prison.